Welcome back guys, we're going to work on the uh, radio again today, um, pick up where we kind of left off. Um, so I'm going to go through section 3 and 4, I can't show you the construction but I'm going to show you all the measurements and everything. And uh, I'm, I'm also going to go through a couple of notes that I've come up with along the way in, in going through this um, kit build. And uh, But first of all, I am going to build something. So I'm getting tired of trying to clip these silly uh, alligator clips from the oscilloscope onto a capacitor and then trying to get the capacitor onto a test point. It, it's uh, annoying me. So I'm going to I'm going to build a little device here. I'm just going to get a little capacitor here and uh, put it into this little grapper here. So I want to get this in the right way. I think I have to go in through this way. Threading a needle and just solder that on there, then trim off the leads, put the cap back on, and then I should be able to just clip on. And by the way, I, I haven't solved the problem with the wireless microphone, so I'm just using the microphone in the camera. I'm sorry about the potentially poor sound quality, but uh, I wasn't having much success with the uh, with the uh, wireless microphones anyway. This cap goes on only one way, so we have to get the lead out through the hole in it. There we go. Now I've got this that I can hook onto here and then grab onto various parts of the circuit as required. I think that'll come in handy. Remains to be seen. All right, so let me go over a couple of my notes I have here. Um, so on page one, uh, in under dynamic measurements, the, the nature of V in is not specified. This, somebody brought this up to me, uh, whether they should use volts peak to peak or volts uh, RMS. In the end, if you use the same instrument to measure uh, at test point four, and that uh, input voltage going into the amplifier J3, it doesn't really matter. Um, and since most most uh, voltmeters these days read an RMS, um, you could just assume it's RMS. If you want, you could use a scope like I did, uh, and just use RMS measurement for both the measurements, and you should be fine. Um, the, the ratios will work out properly. And on page 24 and 27, under assembly instructions in both of those, um, when, you, when you go to install these, um, these can be any random place, like the, when, when I went through this the first time, um, when things didn't work out, this item here, T7, was actually, it was all the way out. So when I went to adjust uh, uh, T8, um, I got some, you know, I was able to peak it, but then when I went to do the bandwidth measurements, it was really strange. That's because this, you know, when this is in circuit, it does affect the other device. So what I recommend is that, um, you know, when you, before you put them in, just turn them all the way down, just seat them. And these normally have a range of about two to two and a half full turns from bottom to top. So then just seat it nicely. Don't crank on it or anything like that. It's just, just turn it until it gets stiff and then back it out one full turn and do that to all of them as, as you put them in and that way at least you're kind of in the middle of the range and really weird stuff shouldn't happen uh, keep your fingers crossed on that and on page 28 I noticed when I was going through it before that they gave the bandwidth as as F low minus F high frequency low minus frequency high of course that's wrong I mean it's frequency high minus frequency low otherwise you get a negative bandwidth which is undefined um, okay so that's all I have to say we've got my little clip built so now I'm going to set this up for the to begin the measurements uh, under section 3 and I'll be right back
Okay, we're all set up here. Now they want us to uh, connect it up to 9 volts, turn it on, and read the voltage on the emitter Q9. So let's do that. Let's turn it on. And we'll read the voltage on the emitter Q9. That should be approximately 1 volt. And you got 1.073. I'll call that good. Okay. We'll set up for the next measurement. Okay, we're all set up here to do uh, the dynamic measurements. So we've got our generator uh, set up as, as shown over there. Um, and the scope we have set up as shown here. And they want us to turn on the power and slowly increase the amplitude of the generator until four volts peak to peak are seen on the scope. Okay, so let's turn on the power. Okay, that's good. And uh, now, and they're asking for a, a scope probe of better than 12 picofarads. That's going to have to be a pretty good scope probe. The one I have here is is, uh, is rated at 9 picofarads, but it's a 500 megahertz probe. I looked around at, at um, the scope probes that I have that are 100 megahertz and 200 megahertz scope probes, and they don't meet the specification for that. So. Um, you know, I don't think it'd be too bad. Like if you, if you have one that's rated at 16 picofarad, it's not, it's not going to destroy the measurements too much. Um, it will affect them. That's for sure. But, um, it's, it's not going to be too bad anyway. Let's, so let's, let's turn, um, T8 here until we get a peaking. That looks right about where my peak is. Okay. Now, get that uh, read exactly four volts. Close enough. And now, uh, after T is aligned, move the scope probe to the base of Q9 and record the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of the signal there. So, okay, I'm going to turn that off for a second. Move this to Q9. Base of Q9. Turn it back on. And then... Uh, got a lot of LED noise in this place here. So it looks like we got about If we take the noise peaks out, so we're running about uh, Yeah, 15 millivolts peak to peak So that's what I will record 15 millivolts peak to peak Okay, turn the power off the AC gain of the second IF amplifier at 455 kilohertz is equal to 4 divided by VB. So that's about 266. And that is definitely greater than 100. So let's move on. We'll check the bandwidth now. This is where I had problems last time with uh, this being pulled all the way out. I got a really strange... Um, I got over a 90 kilohertz bandwidth, which is just ridiculous. Uh, so anyway, reconnect your test equipment, turn on the power, adjust the generator for four volts peak to peak at t test point three. So let's go back over to test point three. And we want four volts peak to peak again, so we need to get the scope back to one volt per division. And turn it on. That's basically where we were at. Yeah. So now, slowly decrease the generator frequency until it drops down to 0 0.707. So let's see, we'll hit it up for frequency and we'll start decreasing it. The 2.8 volts we're looking for. Uh, let's so now our frequency there 
is 446.6. I was called 447 kilohertz. 447 kilohertz. And then they just want us to go the other way. So let's do that. Let's bring it back up again. Past our peak, which was right about here. And we'll bring it up until we get back down to 2.8 volts again. Here we are at 2.8 volts, and the frequency is 465. So doing the math on that. So unlike what they say here, it's 465 minus 447. If I'm not mistaken, it's 18 or thereabouts. And your results should be similar to the value shown on figure 26, which is uh, this one here. So yeah, we're almost right on 445 to 446. We got 447 to 465. So that's that's pretty good. So on the next stage, um, we should be able to tune it in even tighter to 452 to 458. So let's carry on. So we're in this test here we're to connect up the meter uh, as according to figure 23. So at test point five, uh, we've got to read the voltage there, and it should be 1.5 volts. So let's uh, let's turn it on and make that measurement. Here's test point five. And you got 1.44, so that's pretty good. All right, on to the next one. Okay, so here we're just going to measure across the emitter of Q8. And the expected to get about 0.8 volts. A 0.79 that's uh, right on all right that's set up for the dynamic measurements for this section we're going to look at the AC gain okay so now we're all set up um, we have our generator going in here to test point six and we have our scope here on test point four and we have uh, this jumper in here to short out the AGC and uh, now they want us to set the generator to 455 kilohertz so it's set up the way I showed you before over there and then we have our oscilloscope set up as shown over here and we're going to um, increase the amplitude of the generator until approximately 4 volts peak to peak just as we did before so let's go do that okay we're up to 2, 3 4 volts peak to peak, we got 380 millivolts going in there. Increase the amplitude of the generator. We chew the IF transform from T7 to maximize, maximize. So here we are on T7. Okay, so we can lower the voltage here. Let's get it back down to 4 volts again. Okay, here we are. And now uh, let's measure that voltage. So, uh, we're at 20 millivolts per division here. 30 millivolts. VB is approximately 30 millivolts. So 4 divided by 30 millivolts gives us uh, 133 gain of 133. Let's uh, look at this AGC action. Move the scope, probe back to test point 4 and adjust the generator for 4 volts peak to peak. Move the clip, lead shorting TP. The AGC should reduce the signal level at test point 4 to approximately 0.8 volts. So just move this clip. And we should now have 
163 millivolts. Now I noticed this uh, the last time too. Um, this, that's exactly the same thing I got before. That's what we're getting here, 0.163 volts. So I don't know what uh, 0.8 volts is all about or what the range should be. Um, if this is approximately that, I'm not too sure. Now, I, this is exactly the same thing as I got uh, the other day when my shooting failed. Um, and I checked every single component. Uh, they're all exactly right. Uh, so there's there's nothing wrong with the components. Uh, the transistor is doing what transistor is supposed to do. All the right resistors and capacitors are in the right places. All the correct transformers are in there. And uh, we've got to go with that. You know, if you guys have, had, have seen anything different, what did you see at this step? I'd love to know. Am I the only one that gets 0.16 volts or did other people get that as well? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this opportunity here to back up a little bit and I'm going to um, retune this because as I said before, tuning this one was, is going to affect this one. And although they don't uh, talk about that, yeah, I really think that they should mention that, uh, that you should go back and, and redo this. I don't know what kind of change is going to occur, um, but yesterday it was a big change because like I said that, that this was way out of whack and I had to go back and change this quite a bit. So let, let's set this up and um, we'll adjust uh, T8 again. Be right back. Okay, so we're back here. We have everything adjusted to um, get our four volts at uh, test point three. And we're just gonna tweak this a little bit to see if we can peak it a bit better. Yes, we can. Okay, that's a little bit better peak there. Now I'm actually going to head back over the other way and readjust um, T7. So let me set up for that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm just going back and forth here. And I think we've reached a point where we're not getting any more improvement. I think it's, it's all properly tuned now. I but I, I don't know about this. This 0.16 volts on the AGC. Everything seems everything seems to be working properly. And like I said, I checked all the components. Anyway, guys, uh, that's it for this episode. I hope uh, I didn't piss too many people off by taking so long to get this out. But uh, we should be back on track next Tuesday for the next one. And I'm going to make an effort to finish up the AM radio entirely in that section, in that one video. So uh, thank you for joining me and we'll see you then. Bye.